Hello again, friends. This is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com, and welcome back to another MariaDB video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to look at triggers. A trigger is a set of statements that run or are triggered when an event occurs on a table in a MariaDB database. The table events can be one of three different types. They are insert, update, and delete. And you can have two types of triggers for each event type, one before and one after. For example, you can have a before insert and an after insert a before update and an after update, as well as a before delete and an after delete trigger. Let's look at the syntax for creating a trigger. When creating a trigger in MariaDB, we're responsible for providing several pieces of information. As you can see in the current slide, the syntax is create trigger. We have to provide a name for the trigger, so that's the first piece of information. We then have to decide if we're creating a before or an after event trigger. We then decide on the event, and the event again is one of insert, update, or delete. That event occurs on a specific table, so we have to provide the MariaDB table name. And then we have a syntax for each row that's being either inserted, updated, or deleted from the table we provide a number of statements that are going to be executed automatically when the event insert, update, or delete occurs. The main use for a trigger is to maintain the integrity of the information in a database, but triggers can also be used to log data changes, update other tables, and many other things. Here we are inside of the dBeaver Community Edition. And in our tutorial database, I have a user's table. Now that table has an ID, which is the auto increment field, and also a user and a password. Both of those are varchar length 30. So what we're going to do is look at a trigger that I've already created for this user's table. Let's expand the triggers. Now I only have one trigger currently and I've named it bi underscore validate underscore users. The bi stands for before insert. So let's open that up, double clicking, and you can see the trigger itself. The trigger name, as I mentioned, is bi underscore validate underscore users. So it's a before insert trigger, as you see on the next line. The table is users, and now for each row, that I'm inserting into this table, I'm going to check to make sure that the user and the password are not blank. So the syntax, if so, if new dot user equals blank, then I'm going to issue a signal SQL state 45,000. Now SQL state 45,000 is simply a generic state that means an unhandled user defined exception. And that exception I'm also going to set message text for, and the message text for this condition where the user is blank is user must not be blank. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the password. Once the trigger is created, it will run or be triggered whenever an insert is done on this particular user's table. So let's open up a SQL editor and we'll do some inserts and check the validity of this trigger. The SQL editor, open the SQL console, and now let's create an insert statement for the users table. Insert into users, user, password. These are the two fields. And then the values, values, And I'm going to enter null for both at this point. Now let's run that and see how it reacts. It should not update and our trigger should prevent that insert from being actually inserted into our table. 
And again, just let me show you the table before we execute. We'll look at the data. We currently have three records, Elvis123, Santa369, and a user named user. So let's go back to our console and our SQL statement, and let's execute. And we see down here there is an error. User must not be blank. Let's go back to our users table. We'll right click and refresh. And then you'll show that there are still only three users in the table and the blank record was not added. Let's go back to our console. And for the user, let's put in Dave and leave the password blank. We'll execute again. And now we should see that the password also should not be blank in the error message. And there it is, password must not be blank. And now if I change that password to a valid password, we'll call the password secret, run it again. This time we have updated or inserted actually one row. We can go back to the users table and refresh and then show the data that's in the users table. And then you see I have now a fourth record which was added by our insert statement. So that's one use for a trigger to do data validation. There are many other uses that you can explore. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any videos when I release new content. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. It's been great as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.